Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In the last video we discussed um, how would you backup and restore uh, Azure SQL Server or a SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machines. Uh, we have seen also the difference between uh, a SQL Server pre-installed on a virtual machine versus a, an Azure SQL or Azure SQL Managed Instance. Um, in today's video we are going to discuss how would you create Azure Backup Policies. As I promised the last time, uh, we've been talking about Azure Backup Policies or we, we've been using the predefined uh, policies that comes from Microsoft for uh, proof of concept or testing purposes. Today, um, you will learn how would you create the Azure Backup Policy and how would you assign it to uh, like you know, a specific resource uh, and so on. So Azure Backup Policies basically is the brain of the Azure Backup. Uh, and basically um, it controls uh, or it provides certain controls uh, of uh, when you're gonna back up uh, the retention um, like you know the, the retention policy um, the archive policy and many more so basically it's the instructions that you provide to the Azure backup um, and uh, and basically you educate the backup service uh, on how will you back up the resource so basically it's all about your um, like you know your retention requirements your time zone like you know which day uh, or of the week do you back up um, do you want to back up monthly do you, uh, sorry weekly or daily or hourly and so on all of these are goes back to your um, use case and your management goals uh, and also the importance of this application like some some of the application might um, might be not important enough if you lost certain data um, it's okay maybe it's an internal uh, like you know HR application or uh, maybe a, a, a an employee portal or whatever but um, you don't really care about like losing the data and some of other um, applications are really cl critical and that's why um, working with backup policies is very important because um, it will increase the RPO um, or the restore point objective and also your restore time objective as well uh, by controlling also the uh, the snapshots or the instant snapshots. So let's jump into the Azure portal. All right, I'm in the Azure portal. Um, so to like the last time we have created an Azure Recovery Services Vault, we have uh, uh, created some virtual machines, we have created Azure Files, SQL Server, and so on. So to to um, to navigate to the recovery services vault, this is where your backup solution is, is either by going to the recent services. Um, so normally if you ask many services or you're working or interacting with many services, you will find it um, here in the most recent services that you have um, clicked. Or even you might be saving this on your favorite um, list here and then you go directly or even searching from here. So recovery services vault, I just search for recovery services vault. And then I will go to my uh, Microsoft Recovery Services Vault. Um, so the last time we have discussed many different uh, like you know tabs here, but again this is very unified and all uh, resources in Azure. So you won't feel the difference here. Um, you will see like overview page information about the uh, like this resource. Uh, like you know like if we expand this essentials, we will exactly see. Like you know the which resource group belong this um, like resource, what is the location, which Azure subscription, and so on. And uh, we have discussed also the getting started uh, section here, so which is the backup. Um, today uh, we also have seen the backup items as well. Um, like you know where if you enable VMs, you will see it here. If you enable uh, like you know uh, SQL Server machines, you will see it here. Azure files and so on. Today we will see uh, backup policies uh, from here. The backup policies is basically where you manage your policies. So as you can see, these are the pre-built ones. I'm not sure if you can delete this. Um, like, you know, let's try to delete. Yeah, you can delete this one. So these are the pre-built ones. So the moment you create a, a new uh, Microsoft Recovery Services Vault, you will di you will directly see those pre-built ones from Microsoft. Now to create new ones, you just need to click on Add. And then what type of policy? So specifically, we're going to discuss VMs because pretty much the rest are similar. But the Azure Virtual Machine is the one who's offering, like, you know, multiple policy types. The first one is standard. And the second one is enhanced, as I mentioned um, in, my, in the beginning of the video. Now, 
selecting between these two policies are actually it's all about uh, you basically your requirements so the main difference here like there is no interface change basically uh, it's the same thing like you know um, the standard one um, is basically you need to provide the name of the policy let's say hey this is my production uh, VM uh, policy and then this is where it's gonna change here how many how ma uh, the frequency of the uh, like you know of the backup so basically do you want to backup daily or weekly um, so if you are using the standard so basically to think of the standard versus the enhanced if you want to backup hourly then you have to pick up the enhanced ones um, if you uh, like you know are looking to backup VMs with uh, the new uh, the newer BIOS version like trusted launch Azure VMs then you have to select the enhanced ones if it's a standard machine then you will just select the standard machine if you have also Ultradesk uh, you have to use the enhanced policy because it's only supported with this guy so these are the use case that you uh, you might think of but basically uh, we will create one example from the standard and one example from the enhanced as well so this is the daily um, like you know again it depends on your requirements you might select the daily maybe some customers prefer to back up specific machines every day or it could be on a weekly uh, basis and that's why it will uh, like you know increase the cost or decrease depends on your selection so and and also the time zone like the time what time do you want to to back up so normally it's either uh, it's after hours let's say 7 p.m and uh, maybe it's 2 p.m uh, 2 a.m. at night I don't know like you know it depends on your uh, your use case uh, so let's say it's 7 p.m. and then you're gonna select your time zone um, so basically if you are in Ireland um, then you select uh, like you know your time zone if you're in the US you can select the US and so on then there is another feature that you can control this is basically called instant restore so instant restore is basically um, a hot storage that the Azure backup use before it transfer the the backup data to the vault itself the permanent vault so um, the instant restore is very quick and very fast and very close to your VM uh, which is basically it's gonna increase your RTO but also it's gonna increase the cost as well so uh, the instant restore is very useful um, because if you want to do a faster RTO you always have to keep um, a snapshot uh, depends on your also your RTO requirements but it's an expensive storage so basically if the if if you selected this to keep let's say the recovery point two days or maybe five days then it will increase um, the cost of the uh, the Azure backup in general again it's all about the size of the disk uh, like you know the number of times or the frequency and everything all of this can be calculated from the pricing calculator we will discuss the um, the pricing or the cost of the Azure backup and disaster recovery on a separate video but I just want to let you know that these choices also impact the cost uh, also the the other th question that we normally ask the um, the customer is the backup retention so how how long do you want to keep this backup data so basically do you want to keep the last 180 days do you want to keep only 30 days it depends every organization will be different than the other um, do you want to keep it um, weekly do you want to keep the monthly how many monthly backups or how many months you want to keep this um, backup data or even how many years do you want to store this backup data and you will see here um, you can select the retention of monthly maybe like you know uh, I don't know like depends on on like you know on your use case and also the yearly you also can uh, enable like you know you can select also on a yearly basis um, as well and then it will uh, like maybe I want to keep this for um, I don't know seven years right so it will keep this for seven years same um, if you want to select like you know maybe for 60 months uh, and so on um, again this is how it works and then once you keep it like more than six months uh, as far as I remember then you can actually enable something called the archive tier so some customer doesn't want to delete the data um, after those seven years maybe they want to move it to a cheaper um, storage so uh, then Microsoft introduced a new feature called uh, Azure archive tier so this is actually known from the Azure storage account it's an offline storage uh, where you can save all of your uh, let's say security footage or maybe uh, some old files that uh, you just need it maybe once or twice every year or two year every audit 
um, that come uh, just to look into this data so you might just maybe require it uh, require it for uh, like you know this uh, um, I would say health check purposes or uh, like you know auditing so you can actually enable the archiving tier and then um, cheap this uh, save this uh, like you know this data in a very very cheap uh, HDD uh, disk and then whenever it's needed you can actually restore it again and then view that but it's an offline storage so there are also extra process that you need to consider uh, once you enable the tiering on how would you recover um, this one when you click on enable tiering basically it will show you exactly like you know how like sometimes you could randomly pick whatever uh, the data is or even uh, like you know after a specific number of months then it will start to to trigger uh, or to to move the the data from a cold storage to the archive tier finally um, finally this is the resource group um, naming convention so normally by default Azure backup whenever you enable uh, like you know the backup it creates a separate resource group where it will store the recovery points on uh, the Microsoft backbone uh, storage is not on your side um, so if you have kind of naming convention policies or specific naming that you follow you also have to specify it here I have seen it in, in a, a lot in, in the real customer scenario where I was working with a customer trying to enable the backup but the problem is uh, like you know uh, like you know once uh, like once you specify the policy and create and then start to back up the environment it will go ahead and create this resource group so if you have a policy or Azure policy that is blocking uh, or um, there is a certain standard or naming convention it will block the backup from creation and then it will fail we have been, like we have done a lot of troubleshooting um, then I found that okay this is a policy then we have done an exclusion but also, uh, I've researched how would you modify this or how would you change this. So I found that this is the option where you can follow the naming convention you want, right? So this is also going to be selected from the policy. So once you have selected all of your, uh, like, you know, the the standard, like this policy type, the name, uh, backup schedule, retention, and the enabling the archive tier, then you click on create. That's it. You have a policy. Um, so let's also take a look at the uh, like you know it's just seconds and then you will have it here. So again, go back to your Microsoft Recovery Services Vault. Click on Backup Policies. Then we will see here the Production VM policy that we have created and the type of the policy. And this policy can be used with Azure Virtual Machines. So the other option uh, with with the Enhanced, with which is the big difference here, is when you click here. Notice that an hourly option uh, from frequency is uh, like you know is available. So if you click on the standard one again, it's gonna be daily and weekly only. But if you click on enhanced here, then you will see that there is an hourly uh, uh, like you know option, and then you can again create another one, test two. Then you can uh, backup the backup frequency. If you 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 choose the hourly one, then you choose the start time. And then you can say, hey, I want this um, to start every four hours. So the minimum is four hours and you can go, go up to um, 12 hours per day. So every 12 hours is going to trigger a backup. Uh, so you will have many recovery points. But again, it's going to incur uh, uh, like a cost as well. So it depends on how important is the data. Same, ch same choices, time zone, all of this kind of stuff are the same. And then again, uh, you can control the instant restore uh, and uh, you can uh, like, you know, control your monthly and weekly and daily retention. Also, once uh, like there is a minimum requirement to enable the archive tier, it has to pass like again, six months or something, then you can enable the archive tier, same choices. The only difference here is you can select also the consistency type. So there are two types of uh, Azure backup that you can use is the app consistency and crash consistent um, snapshots. Crash consistent doesn't really backup the uh, like or take the in memory. Um, so which mean is that this is our regular or are good for VMs like they don't have a database or they are not online all the time. Maybe web servers and so on. You can actually use the crash consistent. Um, the app consistent is more of application aware, so it actually lock the partition, for example, with the SQL Server, and then start to take a a, a backup, which is more aware of the database. Um, so again, if you have a database and so on, you don't you don't want to select this one. Um, but if you have a regular web server or maybe a machine that is shut down, but you still want to take a backup from this, then you can actually select that option, and then you will have a crash consistent um, snapshot.
All right, so I'm just taking you to the public documentation here where it explains exactly the difference between the app consistent and the crash consistent. But again, this is the default um, option, which is use also the uh, VSS writer in Windows and Linux pre post scripts. As you can see, um, it's going to, to show you exactly when to use what. So basically, this has captured the data in the, the disk and in memory as well, uh, which is much better. Um, versus the crash consistent, it's only um, like you know backup the data, um, like you know in in the data in the disk, but not in memory. And again, it has certain use cases, so it's very important to read the documentation which one or which type that um, is gonna suit your use case. But generally speaking, if you have a database, you never use the crash consistent. Um, that's as simple as that. Uh, so Active Directory, a directory, also the same thing. So you just need to check the documentation. I will leave it also on the description um, to see the differences. And and yeah, that's it. All right, going back to the uh, like you know the the Azure backup here. This is where you can actually start to enable backup. And again, um, you can click on getting started section, configure backup, and then um, you can select the type of the policy. So if you selected if you created the standard one, then you can select from the standard section and then. You will see it's automatically gonna select your like the ones that you have created, which is the prod VM, and then you can select the virtual machines. I'm not gonna repeat the the same steps again because we have done this in the past, but I just want to show you that it will exactly show you the uh, the choice the choices that you have selected, uh, which is different from the rebuilt ones. So as you can see, um, the type is application consistent, and uh, like you know, or file system consistent. That's gonna be the default. So, which is uh, pretty cool. Once you have selected, uh, like, you know, your virtual machines from the blade, uh, from here, then you just can click on enable backup and then um, your virtual machine is successfully uh, gonna be backed up uh, by the Azure backup um, service. I hope this video was useful for you. Thanks for watching.